Hello, my name is Debbie, Allen Gator Stitcher. Welcome to Floss Tube number four. Today is Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. We are having gorgeous weather here in Northern Florida. Um, it's beautiful, sunshiny day, and after I finish this video, I'm gonna take some time and go sit out on our porch um, to enjoy some of the beautiful weather we, ha we have had, or we are having. Um, my heart goes out to people in Texas and elsewhere who uh, suffered from the storm over the past couple of weeks, people who lost their power and don't have water or they can't drink their water my heart goes out to you and i really hope that you will be able to resume your life to normal as quickly as possible or at least as normal uh, normal as we can during the pandemic um, during the past couple of weeks um, nothing too exciting going on here my mother had a milestone birthday so my husband and i went over to see her and my father we brought a cake and it was just the four of us and we just were able to celebrate uh, during this time my mother's big gift though is she got her second uh, COVID vaccination and so therefore and my, my father had gotten his previously so they are hoping um, in the next couple of weeks once she gets to that 90 or 95 percent immunity um, that she, they will be able to go back and resume a little bit of their normal life going out to dinner and other things a lot of their friends in their age group have also gotten the vaccine my husband and i have not gotten ours yet so we are still uh, living a rather quiet conservative life um, until we are able to get um, our vaccines. At this point, we don't have a date for when that will happen, but as far as I'm concerned, it means I have a lot more stitchy and reading time uh, and, and time to enjoy myself. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and show you what I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Um, so I know I've showed this one a lot in the past because this is my focus piece for 2021. It's um, a Haid, uh Cats in the Toy Box, artwork by Leslie Ann Ivory. So I have completed this part here and you'll see that we have the monkey face this little green thing and starting to come over here so here is where i am now so i have i finished this page this was i think page three somewhere somewhere around here is page three and i was able um i had a it's very confetti heavy and so i was able to sort of finish all the stitches in here this is a lot of block color so it has gone very quickly i'm not entirely sure what this creature is it's obviously some sort of stuffed animal but if it's a dragon or a seahorse or a dinosaur, I'm not entirely sure. If you have any thoughts, let me know. Um, so anyhow, um, and so, but what's gonna happen is this is going quickly, but start moving on over here. I get into a lot of confetti. I think there are barely two stitches of the same color next to each other. Um, it's getting into um, sort of the, the doll's face and it just is getting very, very detailed work to get the detail um, that comes up in the artwork. So I am looking forward to that. Um, or looking forward to making some progress and seeing a new creature sort of emerge or a new item emerge um, in this picture. So as I mentioned, this is one of my um, focus pieces or my main focus piece for this year. I'm using it for a lot of different challenge groups. I am using it for full coverage fanatics, 21 and 21, which means uh, 21,000 stitches in 2021. Um, averages out to about 1750 stitches per month. I've almost put in 2000 this month. So I've, I've met uh, my annual, uh, my monthly allotment that is necessary in order to achieve the goal. I have, um, I'm also using it for semi-sane semi stitchers as my focus piece as well. Um, I've also been able to use it for some of the other challenge groups like building a cabin in Magical Stitches, as well as in Crystal Academy, we had something that said, uh, put 200 stitches in on a project that is done on Ada. Um, this is a white 18 count Ada, so fits it perfectly. Um, and then this needle minder, I've said it in the past, it's just from a pin I had from uh, when I was uh, a teenager that we just, just took off the backing and glued on some uh, rare earth magnets. So um, that is my first piece. The next piece that I've worked on, I don't think I have uh, shown this yet on in my floss tube. Um, I didn't get a lot of progress, but it's um, Mystic Sticks Mystic Stitch Oak Drive, um, and this is basically just a lot of live oaks. I love live oaks um, in Northern Florida where I live. This is one of the trees that really defines where we live, and I think this picture is absolutely beautiful. This is a huge um, pattern. I believe it is, um, looking at the stitch count, um, 330 by 328. So maybe not as big as I thought it was. Let me just double yeah, three, sorry, 350 by 528. So it is as big as I thought it was. It's quite, it's not my largest uh, project, but it is one of the larger ones that I have. Um, so right now, um, where I am, I only put in a 
couple of hundred stitches, but um, I've got sort of, you can see this is obviously the closest and the highest oak branch, oak, um, live oak branch up there, and then some of the leaves in the background um, coming through. I am using the parking method on this project simply because there are so many shades of green that I would just lose track of what each one was. It's, it's too hard for me to try and do cross country on this one. So I'm just doing it in 10 by 10 blocks and that works out really well. So I pulled this out because I had a challenge group. I can't honestly remember what it was, um, but this, I think it was, oh, it was for Crystal Academy. I, I had to do something with the landscape. And so I put in 200 stitches on this. Um, and I, I do love this project. It is a bit time consuming because with the exception of like the, this dark part uh, under the branch, there are probably 50 colors in every square. Um, so it just is very time consuming um, to move forward, but I love this project so much um, in the picture. And I've had it, this in my, uh, my collection for a long time. And I finally bit the bullet and said, if you don't start it now, you're never going to get it finished. Um, so I am um, doing a little bit at a time on this one. The next one is my largest project. Um, it's a Hade. It's a little cake shop, um, artwork by Amy Stewart. Um, I think many of you are familiar with her, her artwork. Um, Hade has charted a lot of her things. Um, so uh, this is one, I know I've showed this in the past. Um, and I only put in a few hundred stitches, um, but I'm finally starting to get something besides these little pink things. So up here, this is, I think, the, the molding in the ceiling. Um, so just, just a very little bit. Again, this is the um, max color. And so again, even in these pink stripes, you can have uh, five or six different colors in the light stripe and then five or six different colors, or sorry, in the dark stripe and five or six different colors in the light stripe. Um, so um, this is one, uh, again, if I find something that I need to pull it out, um, I had to, in Magical Stitches, work on my largest whip, so I did that. And I will also be doing that same prompt this week for Crystal Academy, where we have an option to, to put 200 stitches in on our, our largest whip. Right now, this one is moving a little bit faster than Oak Drive, simply because at least I can get, there are fewer colors in each of the squares. That will change, I think, once I start to get more into the picture. And oh, and this one is being done on a 22 count ivory hard ingar and the needle minder is from um, Mad for Minders. Okay. I also, I think I've, I've mentioned in the past that I am doing no new starts in 2021. However, they do have, as part of that, um, you get a freebie. So that if you start a pattern during 2021, you're still technically um, part of, well, you can still be part of the group, but that you still sort of have met your commitment not to have anything started in 2021. I was very hesitant to do the group initially simply because um, there's always something that comes along that I want to start. And one of my favorite sows that I do on a regular basis um, is the Stitching Book Club. So I was hesitant, but then when I saw I said the freebie, um, I had to make a decision about uh, joining the group um, by mid-December and she hadn't released the titles then. But um, I said, well, I'll give myself at least one of those titles as my freebie. And, the first book that they did is uh, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I think many of you have seen um, the pattern. Um, so Kristen from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts um, manages the Stitching Book Club and does, does all the designs. And so this is part one of the mystery stitch along um, for Sense and Sensibility. And so I, I notified No New Starts on their freebie post that I have it, um, that I started this. And so I um, haven't gotten very far. I have to admit, oops, I'm not even sure which way. Um, this is the, the center flower um, and that uh, that was on that picture. And I because I started this a day or two ago, so I haven't gotten that far. I believe we have another week and a half before the, the next part drops. And I, it's totally manageable. Um, I was able to get the kit um, from Sapphire, Ma Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. And so this is her hand dye 28 count uh, even weave. And it looks like it's going to be a gorgeous pattern. It is, um, she said it's not so much about sense and sensibility, but it more has a feeling of Jane Austen. So I'll be looking forward to seeing as more of the pattern emerges. I did participate in her first stitch along for um, the Stitching Book Club, which was um, Pride and Prejudice. So I have that one completed as well. And that was a lovely pattern. And I'm hoping that this one, which already has a very different feel to it, um, but I'm hoping it will be just as nice. 
The next project that I worked on, I showed this uh, one before. Um, this is the tea table. This is one of my WhipGo projects, and I said I wanted to put a thousand stitches into it. So, and I am also using this for. I'm also using this for no new starts. There's challenges within that group, and one of them is to stitch on a daffodil. I'm not entirely sure um, if this is a daffodil or not. Sorry about the glare. Um, this is what happens when you have a beautiful day. The sun comes in and, and causes a glare. I, I'm not 100% sure if it's a daffodil or not, but it looks close enough to me. Um, and so in the Pisces, um, Pisces or uh, under Pisces in the month of March, the, uh, the, the flower of the month is daffodil. Um, so, and so I also really wanted to, to double dip on this one so that I could, um, so that I would have, you know, not just the whip go. I also used it for magical stitches, um, something that we would sacrifice to the gods that were reading um, the Percy Jackson novels, which are sort of a young adult middle school book even, um, which is about a, uh, uh, a boy who discovers that he's a, a, a half god. Basically his, his father is uh, one of the gods and his mother is mortal. Um, and so we had to have something that we would sacrifice to the god. I chose to sacrifice tea. Um, which again, because it's the tea table, um, because that is my only source of caffeine. I don't drink coffee and for now I've given up soda. And so I need my caffeine in the morning to get going. And so I said it would be a sacrifice if I had to give up tea. Um, so that is why I chose this one. Again, uh, so obviously a lot of the greenery got in some of this purple in here, a little bit over here. Some of it's kind of hard to see simply because a lot of the colors I worked on were like very pale grays and creams and things like that. Um, so I still have a little bit more to do on this before um, it gets put away. I still think I have about 600 stitches or so I need to do for WhipGo, um, but I probably will pull out a little bit more in March just so I can continue to um, work on the challenge in you know, new starts. The next one that I worked on um, is Portrait of Veronica by Mirabilia. I love this chart. Um, I think that dress is absolutely beautiful. Um, this was my first Mira that I started. so. Everyone, you know, I was watching a lot of floss too, but people said, hey, you know, I'd like to do the skim whenever one. So I thought, why not? I'll give that a go. Mistake I made, um, so this is a 32 count. Um, this is a 32 count, uh, It's I believe it's witch elt um, in the color uh, star sapphire. So it's sort of a greenish color. And I didn't really know what I was getting myself into and I wasn't really doing it with magnification. And so it, really stalled me. I did this part of her, you know, her hair and the bow and stuff in her hair very, very quickly. Um, it took me a week or two to get all that done. And then I started on her skin and I just stopped. Um, and then my husband had some sort of desktop magnification and I was trying to use that and that wasn't working either. So I finally bought a floor stand magnifier. And so I pulled this out. It had its birthday um, about a week ago. And so I pulled it out to work on it then. I also, um, use it for a lot of the challenge groups. So magical stitches have what's a whip that you are stuck on. And so I got stuck not doing this for a long time. Um, so we had to put a thousand stitches in on that. So that actually didn't get as far as I wanted to. I think uh, I probably pulled down, this is sort of her neck and a little bit just starting to get to the top of her chest. And then I was able to fill in a lot more stitches in her face. Um, so that was even a little bit more than a thousand stitches. And I still don't even feel I'm halfway done with her skin. I also used it for Crystal Academy um, because it was something you had to stitch on something that was frustrating. And so again, I, this whip had really uh, frustrated me for a long time. Um, so this needle minder, I'm not entirely sure who made it, but I got it from, um, I got it in a, uh, um, a giveaway from uh, Carolyn Zook in C. Zook Stitch. Sorry about that brief interlude. I have all of my stuff spread out on the bed and there was a piece of plastic that was a little bit sticky and the cat stepped on it and then she freaked out because she could not get herself unstuck. So I had to go rescue her and she got very upset. So now we have shut the bedroom door and the cats are out. Also discovered that another cat had got herself locked in the closet. I just thought something had fallen over. I was gonna move on. Hi, the cat does not meow. So let me know that she's in there. I think she actually enjoys getting stuck sometimes in dark places. Anyhow, back to my stitching. So. Um, anyhow, so yes, this needle minder came from uh, Carolyn Zook in C. Zook Stitch. So um, I thought it's a fancy bag that will go with the fancy lady. Um, I, 
The next thing I worked on, I showed this last month. This is a year at Hawkrun Hollow, carriage house samplings. Um, so I am, I finished the January block before my previous floss tube and I decided to, um, rather than going across, I'm going down. So I moved on to the April block. Um, I had already met my whip go goal because that was just to finish one block. Not start it, just to finish it. And so, but because of all the different things that is, are that, the different things that are in this, this design, it fits a lot of the different challenges and I love stitching on it. So it gives me a great excuse to pull it out whenever I want to stitch on something um, to meet a challenge. So for my last video, what is done, I've, I've finished, I think I, I have the L in April and showers and put in, a, filled in all of the blue. I think I only had a little bit done as well as started the roof on the house. And this little black thing here, as well as extending the border down a little bit for the block. So I know I use this for uh, Crystal Academy. It was stitch on something that a uh, place where you can hide something and a house has a lot of great places to hide things. So I use it for that. I also was doing, um, I also was doing, I can't remember what it was, but it was basically lots of different chores that you had to do. And so again, it was, there were certain things like, you know, paint the house, in the kitchen things like that so this one got pulled out a lot to do different chores um, because of the house and so those were things we had to do so i probably will work on this a little bit more i also have started to use this um, in their new starts as well for their pisces the pisces slash slash march um, because um the, as everyone should know the pisces is their, their symbol is the fish so there's lots of fish you know here under the ice rink or here in the water I think there might even be more somewhere else, but anyhow, so it just lots of opportunities for me to um, to use this um, as fish. So I will continue working on that as well. And the last piece that I worked on um, during the past two weeks is Gone Batty by Brenda Gervais. Um, this one came out a, a few years ago. I'm doing this on a uh, 20 count, 28 count linen. Uh, Needle minder made by me. Again, this is an old pin I had called Acapella Groupie. Um, and I just pulled off the pin and stuck uh, some magnets on it. Um, so the bat was already done and I had part of the cat done, but I was able to you know, fill in the ears and the nose and the eyes and, and bring him down a little bit more. I will most likely continue to work on him because in Crystal Academy, I'm sorry, not in Crystal Academy, in Magical Stitches, we're having a vocabulary week and so we need to find projects that meet those words so one of them is uh, i think grotesque or grotesquely and i want to say the cat has a grotesquely large head it's very cute but he's kind of long and not relative in size to the way cats normally are um, so i will be doing that um, that one i also use for the letter of the month club i was on c and d this month and so I use that for C because there's a cat as one of the main, as one of the main features in the, um, in the pattern. So what are my plans coming up? So uh, we have only a few days left in March and then, or sorry, in February, and then we will move on to March. So I've had I have a few things that I know I'll be working on. Obviously I will continue with all my challenge groups and pull things out. So I will continue to work on cats in the toy box because that is my focus piece for the year. Um, my goal is to get 2,000 stitches at least in that every month. I also um, have this one. This is the Pandemic Sampler um, by Sarcy Girl. Um, apparently she now has opened up her own Etsy shop as well where she has other patterns that she has designed for sale. Um, this one she was giving away for free and her only request was that um, if you purchase the pattern or if you use the pattern to make a donation to um, an animal shelter or um, another kind of shelter for, for people um, whether you know domestic violence or um, homeless or whatever but to make a donation so I fully admit I'm a crazy cat lady so the thought of giving money to an animal shelter is just it sits very well with me um, so uh, uh, Emily C from I think it's eclectic position possessions um, March is her birthday month and so she is doing a sal so whenever I see a sal like that going on if I have that in my stash or this in this case already started I'd like to jump in um, it just gives me a, a justification to do it so you'll see I've not gotten very far at all on this 
um, this just a little bit on the border. I started this, I think this was the last project that I started in uh, 2020. Um, and so this is done on uh, um, 32 count even weave from Fort Knight Fabrics. I think it's called Panther Cap. So it's, it's sort of like this nice brown, um, model, modeled brown. Um, I believe, I don't, I am, I was in their Fabric of the Month Club in 2020. I think they only had one colorway that you could get one colorway so sort of you got um whatever they had obviously they had different you know different linens and ada and even weave but i think all the colors were the same um so i thought this pattern looked really nice on that one the next project that i plan to work on i don't think i've worked on this one at all in 2021 um, it's called evening romance by artisty um, so it's a lovely sort of winter scene, um, the sort of uh, as the sunset. Um, I think depending where you are, evening might be two o'clock in the afternoon. I, li I lived in Norway for a couple of years, and evening in the winter came very early. Um, so here's where I am on this one. Um, so you can see um, I've got sort of the trees uh, and the snow, and now I'm sort of coming here. This project is very confetti heavy. Um, this page is starting to be a little bit less confetti heavy and there's more, I don't want to say, want to say chunks of color, but just more like the sort of colors in here. There's just more patches of colors that come um, that are coming through. So it makes it easier to stitch. Um, but with the exception of like some of these branches here, uh, or the tree trunk, it's a lot of confetti. So it is slow going, but I really like this pattern. It normally is not something I would stitch. I usually like things with a lot of colors, um, but I, this pattern just really speaks to me. I guess it might be the stone bridge in it. Um, it might be the river or the creek or whatever that is. Um, but I just really like this pattern. Um, and so I'm glad to have a chance to pull this out. I'm using it for letters of the month. Next month we are on E and F. And so E for evening romance. I also then for F will be using Huckleberry Farm. I've know, I know that many of you have seen this. This is uh, by the Blue Flower. And so I've already shown this in this video, or, or sorry, in my floss tubes, um, because I've stitched on it quite a bit in, well, quite a bit uh, for me in 2021. Um, but I'll just show you where, where I am, um, because my goal for each of the letters of the month is to put in 500 stitches. Um, so this is what I have done now. So obviously some of the border and then just a little bit on uh, the mountains that will have a bear in front of it. So I'm looking forward to have an opportunity to work on this some more. Uh, the needle minder is a dragonfly in from Mad for Minders. And the, the fabric is 32 count whimsy by um, Picture This Plus. Um, I'm what Jesse Marie will call the Whipgo um, numbers in a few days, and that will also help uh, me plan for what I will be stitching in March, as well as Crystal Academy, Magical Stitches, and what other, other groups uh, will have prompts that I'm participating in. So I'm looking forward to another great month of stitching. Um, so I now have a little bit of haul to show you, not too much. Um, so I am in the Fabric of the Month Club for Fortnite Fabrics as well. Um, but this year they have a lot of different colorways. I chose to do the 12 shades of gray. Um, so and I'm st uh, still doing a 32 count even weave. Um, so uh, this is the one for um, February's. I love this. It's got be it's beautiful gray color with some great modeling in it. Um, the color is called Honk. They're trying with every of the every one of the colors of the gray in the gray family to come up with something that's related to something gray. So I think Honk is related to the the vodka gray goose and the noise that a goose will make. Um, I also participated last month in Michelle, um, Michelle ben Bendy Stitchy's D-Stash. Um, she had a live D-Stash sale, I think, almost every weekend in January, and then she invoiced us in February and mailed everything out. So I obviously I paid the invoice, so I knew it was coming pretty soon. So whenever you get an envelope like this, you can probably guess it's from uh, Michelle because she has a profound love of donuts. So the, the two items that I had purchased one was uh, this linen and it's just a sort of cream colored linen it's it's very long so you know you could do like a 
band sampler or something like that on there. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but it's a nice color. And Michelle, whenever she does her her de-stash, everything is very reasonably priced. She's not trying to make a profit off of it. Um, and if she's gotten something as a gift, she actually then will donate the proceeds if she's selling something um, to charity. Um, so I believe the next item I got, she had gotten as a gift from uh, from the designer, if I recall correctly, I could be wrong about that. Um, so that's a loft from Hello from Liz Matthews. I love Liz's patterns, but this is the first one that I've purchased. Um, so Liz actually did this. This uh, is, is a, I guess, a light blue linen, and then this is a sort of whatever cream or white. I don't know the exact color she used, but then she sewed them together. My sewing skills are not that talented, um, and so I will. I'll probably just use one piece of linen. She does make the suggestion that if you are not going to do that, you could use pick a light blue um, floss and stitch that in the middle. So that may be what I do um, when I when I move forward to starting work on this. Um, so um, I was really happy to get that one and have a chance to work on a Liz Matthews pattern. Liz Matthews pattern. Um, and then the last last purchase I made. Uh, recently, and I think many of you have seen this. Um, this is from the Whistle Stop Stitcher. Um, this is Chester's place. Um, there's Chester right there. Um, so I think Jen on her floss tube described that uh, Chester was a cat that her sister had adopted from a local shelter. He was a little bit of an elderly gentleman and he um, had a lot of teeth problems and he basically had to have all his teeth pulled. And so Jen, to help her sister out, said, well, let me see if I can design a chart and raise money on uh, through, my, through selling this so that you don't have to pay this very large vet bill on your own. So she designed this. I don't know exactly if that's someone's house or not. It's Chester's house. Um, but these are lots of different animals that Jen's sister um, has, uh, has, adopt, has adopted over the years. And so I've, it's a horse. There's a guinea pig, a dog, a cat. Um, I think there's a chicken on there, um, but the Chester front and center. Um, so apparently within 12 hours, Jen sold, uh, originally I think it was uh, selling the chart for $10, and uh, within 12 hours she had sold 200 of them, which meant that she had raised enough money for uh, Chester surgery. She originally had thought, okay, that's all I'm going to sell, um, but then she decided to um, make the chart available for sale again, but this time I think 50% of the proceeds go to a local animal shelter in her area. And so um, that's what I, pur I purchased it. I would have purchased it anyhow, even if the proceeds didn't go to any and um, to help animals. But I really love that story, and that's a really cute chart. And it looks like uh, it's something that would stitch up relatively quickly. So thank you to, to Jen and her sister for all, everything that they're doing for the animals. Um, that's really wonderful. So that's all I have in terms of stitching. Um, just a few uh, books that I've finished over the past couple of weeks. Um, the first one I finished was actually an audiobook. It was Ready Player One um, by Ernest Cline. I had seen the movies years ago and apparently I made some offhand comment to my husband that um, it was a fun movie, but it really wasn't my kind of movie. But then I had seen that Will Wheaton had done the audiobook narration, and I'm a huge Will Wheaton fan, um, which is kind of surprising given that I am not a Trekkie or a gamer, and those are two things that he's really well known for. But I, I, I liked The Big Bang Theory when he was, and whenever he appeared on the show, I really liked the way that he was able to play a caricature of himself. Um, but at times, there were also some really real moments um, that you could see that he was being very honest and playing himself. Um, Will Wheaton has been very public about um, some of the struggles that he has had with mental health. And there's a, in one scene in particular where he is talking with uh, the character Sheldon in The Big Bang Theory, and he's talking about a lot of the stresses and issues that he had um, after he became famous, but then Star Trek finished and everyone expected him to be the cute kid from Star Trek or Stand By Me, and he couldn't, um, you know, he wasn't that 12 year old that he played on TV and then he had to grow up and get more roles. And I, that just to me is sort of the, the compassion that he showed there. And when you see interviews with him, that he seems like a very genuine person. And so even though I don't like a lot of the work that he has done, not because there's anything wrong with it, but it's just not 
something that I choose to uh, choose to watch. It's not my the kind of thing I like. Um, when I heard he was narrating the audiobook, I went for it, checked it out for my library, and he did a great job. And I was laughing because at one point uh, he's you know obviously he's narrating the book. Um, it's done in first person of the lead character, but they sort of talk about. Um, the author had talked about Will Wheaton and how he was, I don't know what he was, president of some sort of managing the internet or something like that. Um, and that uh, sort of, you know, the irony of that, you know, someone who's this great guy, that was one of the things that people, one of the people that the gamers in that book actually trusted um, to do something well. So I, I thought that was sort of a nice tip of the cap um, to the people who, um, uh, to, to the people who, um, asked him to be the narrator for that book. The other book that I read was the Oysterville Sewing Circle. Um, it's basically about a woman who, uh, a woman who wanted to be a fashion designer. So she leaves her small town in Washington state um, and goes to, um, I believe she, I don't remember, the New York Fashion Institute or something like that, uh, Institute of Design, gets her degree and she's working in New York not having a huge amount of success, but she's paving way for herself. And she all of a sudden finds herself, um, one of her good friends um, dies of a drug overdose and she had two small children. And this woman ends up having to be the guardian to these children at the same time that her career has, um, has um, failed in New York. And so she goes back to Washington state with these children and sort of the about face of her life. Um, there is a lot in this book about domestic violence, um, and so it, while it's called this the, the sewing circle, it really was that was the name of a support group that she started for um, victims of domestic violence or sexual assault, and was trying to give them a safe, safe, safe space in their small communities, uh, their small community to talk about what had happened to them. Um, so it was a good read. Obviously, it's focus, it focused on. A, very serious issue of um, domestic violence. It also does talk a little bit about the fashion industry and both how the models are sort of used and used up, as well as the ease of which up and coming designers can have their design stolen and there is very little recourse for them. And, and so I think some of the characters, in my opinion, they're, you know, they're all either really good or really bad. Um, it's a little bit too wrapped up and neat. I, I'm of the mind that there are very few truly evil people. There are people in difficult circumstances who make poor decisions. Um, but and so some of these the characters that are considered really bad really aren't, you know, they may be doing bad things, but it's sort of everything bad about them can happen. So I that I didn't, um, you know, it didn't necessarily detract from the story, but I thought it could have been a little bit richer if she had sort of given more depth to some of those characters who were having difficult times. She does it with one of the characters who is not a bad character, but ended up in a situation she didn't want to be in. Um, but for the main, the evil bad guy, there's like no good redeeming quality about him. Um, and I thought that perhaps they, um, it would have been great if the author had just developed it a little bit more. Um, uh, and one more book I did, it was another audio book I listened to. I listened to um, Percy Jackson and the, um, Lightning Thief. I listened to that for Magical Stitches. It's, that was the book that they used for this month. Um, it's about a teenager. Uh, I'm sure he's a teenager. Maybe he's like 12. Uh, so a, a tweener. And he is he's discovering that he is the son of Poseidon. I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. Um, a fun listen to it. Um, I think it appeals to kids of his age, people who are the same age as that character. Um, and obviously it's it, I can see it pulling in people who, kids who might feel that they don't fit in for whatever reason. Um, this character is dyslexic and has ADHD, um, but he talks about, well, there's a reason, you know, he has that. And yes, it has caused him a lot of problems in school, but it gives him a lot of skills for other things. And so I can see how that can really appeal to um, sort of younger kids. Um, I had never read anything from the series before. I will continue to listen to the books on audiobooks as they come up for Magical Stitches um, because we get credit in the groups for listening to the books um, and I'm enjoying it. I listen to them on my walk, um, but I think there are more books in the series than um, 
the remaining months of the year and I probably wouldn't continue with it. Again, they're fine. Um, the narrator, I think his name was Jesse um, Bernstein. He did a good job, um, but uh, not necessarily my favorite type of book, but it's something for me to do and I don't have to concentrate too hard um, while I'm walking because I should be avoiding traffic and other hazards that might come up on my walk. Um, lastly, um, my um, husband and I, uh, we discovered a new show um, called Resident Alien. I believe it's on the Sci-Fi Channel. It's got Alan Tudyk. I love Alan Tudyk. I think he is really, really funny. Um, it's sort of a dark humor in the sense that um, this is an alien who basically comes and he uh, his, his spaceship crashes on Earth and he has to um, figure out like where, what happened to his spaceship and he has to kill this guy um, because the guy discovers him and then he has to assume his identity. So, I mean, that's why I'm saying it's starting from dark humor. Um, but he then, you know, is able to... He, and then apparently the guy he killed was the town doctor, so now he has to serve as a town doctor. It's a small town in Colorado. Um, it's a lot of fun. I like Alan Tudyk. It's not intellectual TV by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something that is fun to watch, and we look forward to it. So if you like Alan Tudyk at all, I advise you to, um, to give it a watch. And as my husband says, sci-fi is notorious for ending programs after the first year. Um, so, uh, you know, this is one that theoretically the storyline could be drawn out forever. It might end on a cliffhanger. Who knows? I haven't heard one way or another if they're going to keep the show. But uh, so I take it for what it is. I'm not um, invested in it too much, but it's fun to watch for, uh, from week to week. So that's all I have. Thank you for watching and I'll uh, come back again in about two weeks. Happy stitching, everyone.